Okay, and you'll notice that I said coming down those cables. I use cable booms. We only use radio booms if I absolutely have to. If there's no way of cabling it, uh, you know, I still want the dynamic range. I want all of the quality available to me, and I'm not going to throw away one percent of that quality unless I absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's just for when you had the two. Even with the two corridors, was that in green zone that you that's were? Green zone. Hey, yeah. hey, listen, that we were radio booms. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's and here's how I make a decision about. Um, and by the way, you know that was I, I had a. I, I had a four, an eight-way radio rack in in my rucksack. I had a bag on the front. I had two diapoles clipped to my clipped to my headphones. You know that was crazy stuff. But look, here's here's the thing about radio booms and how I make that decision. My decision about whether to go onto radio boom is based on whether I think that bashing the cable will actually cause the boom. Cable bashing meaning reeling the cable in for those guys who. Who, you know, who don't understand the, the you know, our, our onset ling lingo, but if I feel that actually someone having to pull, it's such a fast move that actually someone having to pull the cable in means that the boom op may trip on his own cable, okay, or we're going to be reeling the cable in too fast and tugging, tugging at his boom pole, making him go off word, off mic for a syllable. If I feel that the move actually would mean that a radio boom will mean that the microphone is in a better position and the boom operator will be able to do his job better. Then my decision is based on the fact that the loss of quality that I get from going to cable from cable to to uh, to radio is smaller than the loss of quality I'll get from a cable getting in the boom operator's way and not allowing him to swing the dialogue as freely and as accurately as he possibly can. So there's my balance point and how I make the decision. 